I'm about to share with you the new Google Ads tips, techniques, and strategies that work really well in 2023. Google Ads as a platform is constantly changing and us advertisers need to change with it if we want to see the best possible results. This video is designed to catch you up with the very latest best practices. The first tip I want to share is to expand the campaign types that you're using. You don't just want to use search campaigns in a lot of cases. Now, I do think that for new Google advertisers, starting with search makes a lot of sense. It's one of the easiest to understand. It's what people often think about when they think of Google advertising. So absolutely start there, but you don't want to stay there as we used to do and as a lot of Google advertisers do now. Instead, you want to expand to some of the other campaign type options. As the Google ad platform has evolved, there are lots of other options that you can take advantage of that you can use to generate more leads, more sales, often at a great cost. Obviously, the easiest way to do that is with a performance max campaign, but I'm going to talk about that more later in the video. The next Google Ads strategy change they want to cover is that we're adjusting our Google Ads delivery more and more to the needs of the business as opposed to what's better for Google Ads as a platform. So for example, we used to be very reluctant to turn campaigns on and off. We wanted that consistent delivery because we felt that that delivered better results over time. But as Google Ads as a platform has evolved, as it has improved, we're less and less concerned about interruptions to things like delivery. So for example, if you have capacity issues at your business, turn your Google Ad campaigns off. If you have low stock levels, turn your Google Ad campaigns off. We're much more comfortable making those sorts of changes, decreasing budgets, increasing budgets, according to the needs of the businesses, running a schedule, for example. So if you're a lead-based business, you work B2B, you might only want to be running ads during uh, nine to five, Monday to Friday business hours, because that's when they are most likely to convert. Those sorts of things we are much more comfortable with, and we're finding that those interruptions to delivery don't affect long-term performers anywhere near as much as they used to. I'd also like to officially declare that you can no longer get away with a crap landing page. Now, this is more of a continuation of a thing that's been happening for a long time. This is not new to 2023, but you used to be able to get away with poorly designed landing pages. They would still often get the job done. That just isn't the case anymore. You have to make sure that wherever you're sending people after they click on your Google ad is somewhere that looks good, that gives them the information that they want, that makes it easy for them to take the next step. All the landing page best practices need to be taken into account. And I see a lot of Google advertisers focusing so much time and effort on their Google ad campaign, they ignore their landing pages. So something that I really want you to put more focus on if you want to get good results with Google ads is on that landing page. How can you improve that? It's a huge part of the process. We are also trusting Google's optimization score more and more nowadays. Now, Google makes various recommendations in your ad account. You may have seen this pop up, an optimization score. It's a score from zero to 100, 100 being fully optimized, zero being not optimized at all. And Google not only tells you what your ad is in terms of an optimization score, it also rec makes recommendations around how you can improve it and improve that optimization score. They might recommend, for example, that you change your targeting settings, open things out a bit from a location standpoint. They might recommend that you add in some more headline variations so you can test various things. There's lots of different things that they might recommend within um, your campaigns. Previously, we found a lot of those recommendations just weren't very good, didn't apply. We think they're getting better and better. Their AI is improving and we want to take advantage of that more and more. So instead of dismissing those, as we may have done more so in the past, we're now actually implementing implementing a lot of the stuff that Google is recommending. Now, I do want to mention a couple of points around this. Firstly, you can have an optimization score that's close to 100 and the ad still not perform very well. It is not a guarantee of performance. It's just likely to improve performance if you can improve your optimization score. Likewise, you can see ads with low optimization scores still produce good results. Also, whenever you're looking at these recommendations to improve your optimization score, you first have to ask yourself, is this something that's going to convince me to give more money to Google. Those you want to watch out for, they're obviously quite self-serving. A lot don't feature that. They're things like create other headline variations. That's not going to um, provide more money, take more money out of your pocket and give it to Google. That's more just around getting better performance. But if, for example, some of the recommendations are to increase budget because you'll get more um, conversion volume, the campaign will be able to optimize better. That's something that you might want to take with a pinch of salt. Overall, they're definitely better and they're, they're improving and we, we trust them more and more, but you still need to be a bit clever about these things. One thing that we're putting more and more emphasis on in 2023 is to stop optimizing for cheaper clicks. It's time to stop. Really, when you're running a campaign and you have conversion tracking set up, which you obviously want to do, there's really only one metric that matters, and that's going to be your cost per conversion, or obviously if you're able to track more specifically your return on ad spend because you've got conversion values being factored in, then you want that number to be the thing that you base your decisions around. 
getting cheaper clicks isn't really that important and it can actually hurt the performance of your campaign because often the very best prospects to advertise to are more expensive to reach. Other advertisers have figured out that certain keywords convert better and that's why those keywords are more expensive and you're going to pay more cost per click. A lot of Google advertisers are stuck in the old way of doing things where you try and get as cheap a clicks as possible, cheaper traffic, you're hoping that you'll end up with a cheaper cost per conversion eventually. Often that isn't the case. So if you just base your decisions in terms of optimization, whether to turn off ads, et cetera, et cetera, around the cost per conversion or your return on ad spend, you're likely to get much better performance overall, even if that means you generate less clicks and those clicks cost more because those are higher quality prospects. Now, there are three more Google Ads tips that I wanna quickly get to, but before I do that, I wanna quickly let you know about our done-for-you Google advertising services. So we can create, manage, and optimize your campaigns, take that workload off your hand, and almost certainly help you get much better results. If you're interested, there's a link in the video description below. If you go ahead and click on that, you'll be taken to a page on our website where you can book in a call with one of my team members. So go ahead and book a call if you're interested. Hopefully, we get a chance to work together. With more competition than ever from other Google advertisers, specificity in your marketing message is becoming really, really important. Now, the way to do that is you break down your ad groups into subsections, you get more specific, and that way you can match the ad copy to the keyword that search for and even go one step further and add landing page relevance specifically to that ad copy and that keyword that has been searched for. So to give you an example, let's say that you're a business that offers lawn care services. Now, instead of just having the one ad group for lawn care services, you could go ahead and break that out into different subcategories because there are people within your market that might be interested in different services within the overall umbrella of lawn care services. So some people, for example, might just want their lawn cut, they want their lawn mode. So you could have a, an ad group for grass cutting services. You could have a different ad group for seeding, if that's what people need. You could have a different ad group for uh, removing weeds within a lawn. There are different subsections and if you can match the keywords, what people are searching for with the ad copy, you're gonna get more clicks, you're gonna get more relevant prospects coming through to your landing page and probably more conversion. Now, that is a bit more effort upfront, but it's well worth doing. We have also now changed most of our Google Ad campaigns bidding strategy to maximize conversions or maximize conversion value. Again, if you have that as an option, you're able to track the value of the conversions that take place uh, via your website, via your store, etc. A lot of advertisers use maximize clicks. They're trying to get as many clicks as possible. And we will still sometimes start new Google Ad campaigns with that bidding strategy, but we will quickly look to switch them over. A lot of Google advertisers start with that and they stick with that over the long run. Again, that's quite an old school way of doing things. And just like I mentioned previously, you don't want to go after um, the cheapest clicks. You don't want to go after as many clicks as possible either, because what you really want is conversions or you want the most valuable conversions possible. What we want to do as advertisers is put Google's really powerful AI optimization machine learning process on our side, tell them exactly what it is that we want and allow Google to go out and get that for us to, to make that happen. So definitely go for maximize conversions or maximize conversion value depending on your business if you can especially once your campaign has gotten going and you've gotten up and running and you've generated a few clicks in the first place one of the themes of this video has been handing over more and more control to google and trusting their ai to get you the best results possible now by far the easiest way to do that is with a performance max campaign and in this video here i show you exactly how to set up a performance max campaign from scratch they are incredibly powerful and surprisingly quick and easy to set up when you know how go ahead and check it out 